Good morning, good morning, beloveds. This is Chakra Wanda. Glad to be here with you today. I am Chakra Wanda. I'm an international angelic spiritual encourager. And I help I help those who are awakening. Uh, I help light workers. I help individuals who are moving to a higher space within from within themselves. Hi, hey, Kelly Jo, how are you? I am an angelic spiritual encourager. Yeah, I work with people. I've worked with people for many years. Um, I use this platform to continue to support and encourage. And uh, good morning. So first thing is, you guys, if you're seeing this and you haven't had a chance to receive the gifts of the previous broadcast, I did, I have been posting a daily angelic number vibration um, broadcast every morning. So go and get your gift um, from that in the previous broadcast. Uh, I have some announcements before I get to share the message for the morning. And that is, I want to invite you guys to also join me on uh, YouTube. And it is um, Ch Chakra Wanda Angelic Healer on YouTube. I'm repurposing or actually going over there and placing uh, videos and content and information uh, on that. And would love to have you subscribe. And you can also share with others. What else did I need you to know? Um, hmm, that's if that was it as far as that particular change. But every day you can expect. Thank you, uh, Kelly Joe, for the hearts. Um, every day I post a daily angel number vibration. Okay, so for today, December thirteenth, I talked about the vibration associated with that particular number, but also helping you understand the guardian angel that governs the date of December 13th and um, understanding those, excuse me, there's an angel for every single day, but there's also that angel governs over a five day period within the calendar year as well. And this is coming from the Kabbalah Tree of Life, an ancient, ancient Jewish um, tradition of the 72 names of God, the 72 angels of God. So I talk a lot about that in my broadcast. And again, your, um, your special invitation to you to join me and uh, follow me on um, YouTube. So let's see. I'm also on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter, Chakra Wanda Angelic Healer. I want to talk today about transmuting the energy of fear. Transmuting the energy of fear. Um, I want to start off by reading a message from Les Brown that popped up in my Facebook today that I thought was really, really wonderful to kick this off. Les Brown is one of my favorite motivational speakers. So here's what he says. Open yourself up to the possibilities of how expansive your life can become. Stand in the knowing that you have so much more in you to express. Decide today to make a massive step forward with a smile of determination to move the challenges and obstacles facing you out of your path. Finding one area of your life that needs to be changed, be it your relationship, finances, health, or your work-life situation. Ask yourself, who do I need to become? And what must I do to make a major impact on this part of my life? Give this area your undivided attention for a minimum of 15 minutes each day for at least 30 days and make this commitment non-negotiable. What is more important than your own word to yourself? Make it happen. You have something special. You have greatness within you. And again, that's quoted from Les Brown. 
so full, so full of movement, so full and infused with um, high vibration, uh, uh, almost like fireworks for the mind, for the spirit to rise up. You, you literally, when it comes to hearing from spiritual, from, from teachers of encouragement, um, you have an inner encourager, you know? And it, it, it takes work to really stay tuned to that inner encourager. When I read this again, it says, uh, decide to take a massive step forward. That's going beyond your comfort zone. That's going beyond your comfort zone. When's the last time you've gone beyond your comfort zone? I have to ask myself, Wanda, when's the last time, Chakra Wanda, you went beyond your comfort zone? I'm doing that a little bit more and more and more every day, every month, every year and more. But massive, massive steps. Right? And asking the question of yourself, of the universe, what do I need to become? You know, you look at the various areas of life. You know, I get the vision of walking through life, right? And there's certain things that you do want to accomplish. You want to increase prosperity and allow that to enhance, to give you more freedom to do other things. Um, you want to shift and transition out of work that no longer serves you into something much higher that's, that that gives you, I don't know, it, it, it makes your heart dance, right? But there are obstacles that keep coming up in the way that block. And, and you can't, it's almost like a ball and chain. So how many balls and chains do you have around your ankles? You can't move very, you can't move, you know, very much with balls and chains. Ball and chains of, a uh, balls and chains of um, things related to old uh, connections and old relationships and finances and insecurities, those are all balls and chains. And I have to look at that for myself and say, you know what? Uh, you have to, you'll come back full circle to have to face it and have to make some new changes. You have to write that vision down and ask that question again, who do I need to become and what must I do to make a major impact in my life? There's a work that I do. I'm a facilitator. I'm a life visioning facilitator. And a part of being a life visioning facilitator is going into a quiet, receptive prayer contemplation. Really just being totally quiet. And you ask these five powerful questions. The first one is, and you're asking the universe, you're asking God, but you're not looking to try to answer the question. You're looking for palpable signs and nudgings uh, from the outside world or perhaps the inside world. You never know what you'll experience when you allow yourself. So the process is to ask the five questions and after you, you ask the five questions, you sit in quietness. Right. As a facilitator, I lead people into that. So the first question, let's do this as an example. I'll give you a sampling of life visioning. First question is to ask of yourself, not yourself, sorry, of the universe, of spirit. You close your eyes and you repeat this question in your mind. What is the highest possibility for my life? And then you allow yourself to be in quietness. Or the question could be, what is the highest possibility for this passion, this work that I have? What is the fi highest possibility? Good morning for my finances. What is the highest possibility for my health? And you sit and you, you're quiet. You listen. What are you listening for, Chakra Wanda? You're just, you're listening with your spiritual ears. Perhaps you'll see something with your spiritual eyes. Perhaps there will be a whisper from your angels. And then you move into the next question is, what must I become in order for my vision? What must I become in order for this vision to manifest. 
So the first question is, what is the highest possibility? And then the second question is, what must I become in order for the highest possibility to manifest? And then you go into quietness again. Forever how long that it takes. And then the third question is, what must I release in order for the highest possibility to manifest? And then you're quiet again. And then the fourth question is, what must I embrace in order for the highest possibility to manifest? And then the final fifth question is, is there anything else that I need to know in order to be, in order for the highest possibility to manifest? Now, I took you through that pretty quickly, but typically when you're being a part, when you are a part of a life visioning uh, session, and I've done this in groups, you know, I've done it one-on-one, -on -one. it is amazing when you come out of this particular journey. Now, you can have a journal and and write down the nuances of what you're feeling and any thoughts that come to you during that time and journal it right away, or you can Allow yourself to go through that full receptive meditative state of being again in the quietness between the questions. There, you know, it's a practice of basically being still in your mind, in your thoughts. You're not looking to answer it, you're looking to hear. And I mean, not. The, through the ear, the physical ear. I'm talking about the spiritual hearing of all the senses within your body. You could see spirit could be communicating to you in colors or sensations or, you know, when I take groups through it at a week at a time, sometimes we stretch it out to like a four-week situation and one question or a five-week situation and it'll be one question for each week. It'll just be ask the question, go into meditation, they go about their whole week in an awareness, paying attention to what shows up. And it's fascinating when they come back together at the end of each week, the stories that you hear and the awarenesses that occur is powerful. So asking those types of questions and being open to Feel and sense and see what spirit has for you. What must I become? What must I embrace? What must I release? What is the highest possibility for my life? What is the highest possibility for this idea? And so there you have it. Going through that process is a beautiful way of transmuting any energy of fear into fuel. So you might have something that has kept you petrified. You haven't made any movement in it. You can't see your way out of it or around it. That energy of fear can be transmuted as fuel to help move you forward. So you're either doing what you're using fuel. You're using your energetic fuel all the time. Pay attention to your thoughts. Are the thoughts fuel to move you forward? Are the thoughts keeping you in the in in the constraints of fear? Think about that. Well, beloveds, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, move into the rest of my day. I want to um, share with you a, a message card. Let's see. Oh, I love the uh, Power of Intention by Wayne Dyer. Let's see what the, the angels have for us, what will show up as I close out with uh, an infused message, message from, from this deck. And let's see what it says. Did I get one or two? Oh my gosh, two came out at the time. So look, two came out. One is, use your imagination. And the other is, 
attract the right people. All right? So let's see what this says. Your imagination is the concept of spirit within you. It's the God within you. It's the invisible connecting link to manifesting your own destiny. Attract the right people. You can't expect to draw people into your life who are kind, confident, and generous if you're thinking and acting in cruel, weak, and selfish ways. You must be what it is that you're seeking. That is, you need to put forth what you want to attract. I think these are two on-time messages. I really like that. <laughs> So let's close out on this um, little thumbnail. Thank you guys for coming in, Kelly Joe. Good to see you, honey. Ashley, blessings to you each and every time, y'all. Your y'all's presence are are so appreciated. Replay viewers, I love y'all too. And again, Ashley, I have a special invitation. If you're on YouTube, follow me at Chakra Wanda Healer. Okay. I'm going to be doing, you know, some things over there as well as a part of my overall mission as an international angelic spiritual encourager. Blessings to both of you and all of you replay viewers. Okay, bye.